My name's Merrick Moffitt, and I'm a CTO and co-founder of General Lattice. Uh, before I start off, I just want to thank Duan for putting on uh, this awesome event. As I look around the room, I see so, so many talented uh, individuals and uh, talented minds and truly, truly humbled to be here. So, so thank you and I would love to connect with everyone, so please come up and find me. So with that, we'll sort of jump into it here. And today I'll be speaking about the GL's take around the concept of geometry and data combined. And so to do that, I wanted to explain a little bit about GL's history and how we organically sort of came to the solutions we have today. And so at its core, uh, GL develops digital materials, uh, solutions with the ultimate goal of influencing widespread adoption. So established in 2019, uh, General, uh, we aim to serve commercial and government clients. And over the years, uh, probably say over four years of consulting, um, we kept running in to the same problems when we dealt with our clients. And the services we offered were lattice as a service. And so during these processes, working with our clients, you can get plagued down in tons of tons of parameter options when designing these superstructures, whether it be generation from the topology to the data type to the file size to the wall thickness to what manufacturing hardware do you use, what material do you use, uh, how do we know what lattice to use when we have all of these options. And so what we ran into was this reoccurring problem, how to find the correct lattice. And so again, you know, what unit cell do I use? What thickness? What's the correct material and hardware combination? And what's the, what's the correct lattice for this application? How do we get there? And so we would run into this process over and over again of generate swatches with the best guess unit cells, print on best guess hardware and material combinations, and ultimately test for relevant properties. And after you've sort of done this shotgun effect, you may or may not find your optimal solution. And uh, we refer this to as, you know, finding the needle in the haystack is a really good analogy. And so what's really discouraging about this process to a lot of clients is that it's very early stage. You're looking at material swatches or sample pieces, and you go to do your study, may not even find the results you want, and the material's not even in your design space yet. And so from the beginning, there are just many, many hurdles that stop a lot, a lot of different clients. And so how can we get ahead of this? And so I want to bring you to the concept of digital materials. And General Lattice defines a digital material as a unique ID with physical properties made up with three main elements, being advanced geometry, hardware, and a raw material. And the overall goal of a digital material is to simplify and streamline the process of identifying your appropriate lattice in your application. So imagine being an engineer, just getting into additive, uh, exploring some latticing tools. You have an array of different unit cells. You can manipulate their fields. You can do all these different things. Where do I start? And so the goal is to remove uh, the, excuse me, the goal is to uh, remove a lot of the, the hurdles involved. So don't worry about if it's a gyroid, if it's a Schwartz, don't worry about the wall thickness. All you really need to think about is, can I get these mechanical properties into my design space? And so again, just to reiterate, um, the idea of a digital material is to create a familiar process to a traditional design engineer going to look and manufacture a mold apart and they can go to their traditional raw material databases and find the resins that will work for their application, we want that process to be replicated for uh, digital materials. And so what's a good example of a, a digital material? And so a fantastic example is uh, the airless prototyped uh, a digital material developed between Wilson Sporting Goods and General Lattice. Uh, and what's really exciting about this is Wilson Sporting Goods came to Geo Labs with an opportunity. Can we make a basketball without an airless bladder? And so we quickly knew that to get to the results we needed, there was going to be a process 
very similar to that we worked with all of our commercial and government entities being, okay, we don't really know where to start. We need to start sampling some, some materials here. And so we recreated that process uh, with uh, Wilson. And the tricky thing about this particular concept was that this was the first time General Lattice had to create a digital material with multiple property objectives. And so what I mean by that is not only did the ball have to rebound to a certain spec, it also had to weigh a certain amount and also had to be symmetric hemispherically, which can be a, it's a, a pretty difficult design engineering challenge. And so we achieved these three objectives, uh, again, through going through a similar process of uh, how we've done in the past. And so that looks something like Wilson coming to uh, with conception, uh, Geo Labs uh, adding, adding computational design tools and methods, EOS for the manufacturing, and Dimension for the post-processing. Uh, this would ultimately return to Wilson uh, using their state-of-the-art physical testing facilities to get and collect data around each iteration. And the way that we set up our parametric model and working with the industry-leading collaborators, we were very quickly able to take that data back from Wilson's uh, testing facilities and edit the model the way we needed to and spit it out to get another test sample. And that process continued until, until we achieved all of our results. Um, something I wanted to point out about this project, and I, I heard it mentioned in an earlier presentation, is uh, how critical collaboration is in the industry. Um, you know, none of this could have been done through any one of partners alone. And again, identifying what critical aspects need to be attempted and looked at all in the early design stages are really what are key. So, you know, for example, if Wilson and GL Labs worked very early on on a design and uh, had no intention of what material hardware process to, know, uh, to use, uh, the results would train, change quite drastically when you go to manufacture. So again, just collecting all that data up front for you, what you know you're gonna print your parts in is, is very, very helpful. And so we can go into a quick video if anyone missed before it changes everything. Before trial and error and breakthrough. Someone had to ask the question, what if it's possible? Because it seems impossible. A basketball made of powder and lasers that plays like the basketballs we've always known, but that bounces without air. Wilson asked the question, the Wilson Airless prototype. A ball that takes everything we know and reaches for something beyond. Awesome. So, really, why this is exciting is it allowed uh, Wilson and Geo Labs and the whole team to basically go from a concept to an airless prototype in, in 12 months. And uh, speak, with previous conversations mentioning, you know, uh, taking years or uh, months to get to, to a final solution, the iterative process is what was really key to uh, getting to such a short timeline. And what's really exciting is, for General Lattice at least, this was the first time that we proved to the industry that mechanical properties can be programmed and tuned through uh, the combination of geometry, hardware, and materials. And so, how can we make this more accessible? Uh, we've identified the hurdles with digital materials. We know that digital materials can be applied to real applications like the airless prototype. So, how do we allow digital materials to be adopted by others? So that brings us to uh, GL Frontier, uh, the first third-party digital material platform. Uh, it's a web-based solution for users to easily search, evaluate, and integrate uh, digital materials for their application. Uh, like I previously mentioned, our goal is to really emulate how a traditional design engineer may go through uh, designing a part process. So here's my design space. I know the mechanical properties that I need to reach. What are the raw materials I need to use? 
And so GL Frontier is really designed to recreate that. And it can be looked at and broken down into two parts. One being uh, Frontier Explorer, with the ability to search, evaluate, and order materials. And Frontier Integrator, uh, the integrator is used to generate uh, the digital material inside of your space. So to look at, you log into the Explorer webpage and you can look at your uh, database full of all of our digital materials. Here I'm looking at some of the properties of a specific digital material, sort of floating over our different options with the ability to like and save materials. Go into my save materials and eventually have the ability to go and start searching based off mechanical properties. So here I'm querying uh, Young's modulus, and we can see that uh, we went from 3,000 materials down to 388. Um, here we're filtering by a hardware type, being EOS, where our, our search has been down filtered to six materials. And now we're going to start uh, looking at plateau stress to start filtering out uh, maybe some r less relevant samples. So we ultimately come to uh, a material, a digital material that is, is useful for our application. And you can see here uh, we're evaluating the underlying properties. This looks good. And now we can order a sample. And so the goal of this, again, is to create a free database that is exciting to people that are non-experts in additive or maybe are uh, experienced in additive, but gets way of all the hurdles of generation, manufacturing, simulation, physical testing. Can you have a lot of these answers for you up front? And so that brings us into uh, the, the integrator tool. Uh, the integrator tool um, works a web-based system that's connected to our database. And the idea is that when you find materials that are suitable for your application, you can actually drag and drop or integrate this material into your design space. And again, the idea of this is to really create a streamlined uh, uh, approach for someone who may not want to learn all of the uh, intricacies of a new tool, may not want to purchase a new software platform. Uh, can this all be done in the web? And can all of the things you care about be put into your shape, which are the mechanical properties? Um, and again, not worried about the strut size, the cell thickness, um, the idea of just getting the properties you want. And so, with Frontier Future Growth, um, today we're really focused on polymers, especially elastomeric polymers, looking at foam replacement. But the goal is to touch as many industries and application areas as possible. And so as we look to the future, we want to break into metals, ceramics, and, and composites. And looking for drive, or partners to drive development of these verticals, and, and not only for AM. Um, as it was mentioned earlier, um, a digital material doesn't have to be additively manufactured made. CNC, knitting, some other exciting uh, manufacturing hardwares exist. And the goal is to grow and adopt as many of those as possible. Again, ultimately touching as many industries as we can. And to also grow the partner, uh, to grow the database, we're really, really trying to grow our partner network. And these partners are extremely critical for us um, or for multiple reasons. One being uh, standard operating procedures for repeatable results. Uh, a lot of us know that uh, two contract manufacturers are not made the same. And so when you order a part or we are testing uh, lattice samples, we need to ensure that uh, they were all made the same way. Um, in partnering with these industry leaders of material and hardware will really allow us to keep an honest, transparent look at the data and make sure everything we're doing is up to spec and, and real. And so um, really excited to recently add Formlabs and Invonic to our database and looking to grow that as, as fast and as much as we can. And I think that's it. Before I end, um, please come see the, the, the prototype here, uh, whatever you guys might want.